In this video, I want to talk about vector database similarity metrics, why they're important, and how to choose the right one for your application. Now, there are a few similarity metrics, but they all quantify the closeness between data vectors. These data vectors could represent your documents, images, or any other kind of data. They are used in a wide variety of applications, including anomaly detection, clustering, information retrieval, and of course, recommendation systems. And some common metrics include Euclidean distance, dot product, and cosine similarity. Choosing the right similarity metric for your use case can be tricky. Ideally, you have some evals, and you could use these evals to test multiple similarity metrics. But in practice, often these evals aren't available. So the best way to choose a similarity metric is just to logic your way through it. Some important points that can help you choose the right metric include thinking about what similarity metric was used for your embedding model when it was trained, and to think about your data and how you want it compared. So often you could logic your way into the right similarity metric, even if you don't have the evals to necessarily prove that it's the best one. Euclidean distance is a similarity metric that looks at the distance between vectors as the crow flies. So it's the straight line distance between any two vector points. Vectors that are more similar are going to have a shorter absolute distance between them. And this takes into account both the magnitude and the relative direction of the vectors. It's calculated with this formula, which just does a little bit of trigonometry to find the straight line distance between vectors. But here on the right, we see four vectors, a, b, c, and d. And even though c and d are much closer to each other than a and b in terms of angle, they are much farther apart in terms of Euclidean distance because it takes into account not only the relative direction, but also the magnitude. And in higher dimensions, it's often called L2 norm. So when we're creating our database schema, we're going to call this L2. One thing that's interesting about Euclidean distance is that at higher dimensions, it often gives unpredictable results. An example for this is let's say we had a two dimensional vector where the first dimension represents the score a student got on an exam and the second dimension represents how much they studied. Students who got very similar scores on the exam can be considered very different with the Euclidean distance just because they studied a different amount. So you generally have to think about how is closeness defined in your application and do you want large outliers to have an effect on your similarity score. Dot product is a similarity metric that looks at how aligned two vectors are. So you could use dot product to figure out whether vectors are pointing in the same direction, opposite directions, or are perpendicular. And it's calculated by multiplying the corresponding elements and then summing the results. It's defined mathematically with this formula, where we're going element by element, multiplying and summing. But there's actually another way to calculate the dot product. And that is to take the magnitude of the vectors and then multiply that by the cosine of the angles between them. And for that reason, in general, if the angle between them is very small, then they're going to be similar. If the angle is 90 degrees, then they're going to be completely unrelated. And if the angle is around 180 degrees, then they're going to be opposites. And dot product is often used to actually calculate cosine similarity. Because if the vectors are normalized, then the dot product will give you the same exact result as cosine similarity, but slightly faster. Cosine similarity is a metric that measures the similarity of two vectors using the angle between them. And the magnitude of the vectors does not matter at all. Only the angle itself is considered, and in this way it's different from dot product. And that is reflected in its mathematical formula which is defined as just the dot product divided by the product of the magnitudes of the vectors. So the top part is the dot product, and the bottom part of this formula normalizes for the vector magnitude differences. And the result is a similarity value between negative 1 and 1. In cosine similarity, just like in dot product, vectors are deemed least similar if they're pointing in opposite directions, and they're most similar if they're pointing in the same direction. And a higher value, once again, means that vectors are more similar. 
And this has all kinds of applications. For example, topic modeling. In topic modeling, every vector represents a lot of different topics or ideas. And cosine similarity will kind of ignore outliers in terms of the strength of the individual topics. So if one topic is represented extremely strongly, then that won't affect the results too much. It's also used in document similarity. And the reason for this is in document similarity, the query vectors are very different from the document vectors. The query vectors are usually represented as a sentence and they're much shorter, while the document vectors are, or the documents themselves are much longer. And what this means when the document is longer, a lot of the ideas in it can be represented more strongly. And cosine similarity will be able to find the conceptual similarities between the queries and documents because it's only looking at that. It's not looking at the relative strength of the ideas in the corresponding vectors. Another application is collaborative filtering. In Collaborative filtering, which is used in recommendation systems, the resulting vectors have some representation of some semantic ideas, but also the strength or popularity of individual objects or documents. For example, if we had a collaborative filtering system based on movies, we would have a bunch of vectors that would have some representation of the meaning of the movies or their plots, but also how popular people found them. And what cosine similarity will do, it will focus more on the conceptual similarities between movies and less on the actual score that they received. And what this results in is a, a search system where you can take a movie and find similar movies to that specific movie. And you won't be overwhelmed with movies that are very popular, even though they're a little less similar and relevant to you specifically. Cosine similarity is useful when vector magnitudes vary significantly. For example, if you have a lot of ideas represented and some ideas are represented more strongly than others, you can get more conceptual similarities by using cosine similarity as a metric. And it's also useful when direction is more important than distance. Cosine similarity completely ignores the relative strength of vectors. For example, here we on the right, we have vectors A, B, C, and D. Well, A and B are, in terms of magnitude, very different. But they're more similar than C and D, even though they have pretty much the same magnitude. And that's one of the advantages of cosine similarity. We could think of B as the query vector and A as a document vector. And conceptually, they're very similar, so we're going to find them uh, very similar, and their similarity score is going to be very high. So when do you use each measure in practice? Well, the best practice is to use the same similarity measure that embeddings were trained on. So if your embeddings were trained on cosine similarity, you should use cosine similarity. If your embeddings were trained on Euclidean distance, you should use Euclidean distance. And the reason for this is if you use a similarity measure that is different from the one your embeddings were trained on, then you might get unexpected results. Your choice should also depend on your data characteristics and problem context. So for your specific problem, you have to define what does similarity mean? Do you care about the relative strength of your vectors? Do you care how strongly ideas are represented? And one good way to test this is just to try some queries with different similarity metrics and see which one seems to get good results. If you have evals, use evals, and you could try different measures with different evals and get a more robust idea of which one is best for your specific use case. Euclidean distance is best for something like clustering analysis. So for clustering analysis, we have points in space, and we want to cluster them, right? And straight line distance makes a lot of sense. We just look at how far away they are apart in space. It's also good for anomaly and fraud detection. For example, if we have an area in multidimensional space, which we know is okay, which we know is in the scope of expected results, and we get a point outside of that area, then it's likely an anomaly. For dot product, dot product was traditionally used for image retrieval. And this makes a lot of sense because for image retrieval, we care about how much different features are represented. So for uh, an image, we can have a feature that represents how blue it is 
or another feature can be whether it has a certain object. And we care about the strength of these relative vectors in theory. But in practice, a lot of re image retrieval systems use multimodal embeddings, like clip embeddings. And clip was trained specifically with cosine similarity in mind. So cosine similarity makes more sense for clip image retrieval than any other similarity measure. So even if a specific similarity measure makes sense in theory, in practice, it's best to use the measure that embeddings were trained on. Dot product is also used in the fully connected layer in neural networks and has a lot of different applications in deep learning in general. Dot product is also useful for something like music recommendation systems. Let's say you're Spotify and you're creating a music recommendation system. Well, Spotify usually recommends you songs that are popular, and that's often more important than how similar it is to your specific tastes. Just because popular songs, you're likely going to like them. So dot product can incorporate the popularity of songs much better than something like cosine similarity. Cosine similarity, on the other hand, is great at something like topic modeling. Topic modeling is this idea that you have a vector which represents a lot of different topics and how strongly these topics are represented. So for cosine similarity, it'll ignore some of this variance and strength of these different topics and find vectors that are conceptually similar based on the combination of topics that they represent. And for document similarity, it's also very good because it ignores some of these differences between the query and document vectors. And it's great for collaborative filtering and recommendation systems. For the same music recommendation example, let's say we wanted to recommend music that is specifically very relevant to our user. Well, cosine similarity would make more sense because we would ignore some of this variation in how popular these songs are. So I really hope this video helps you decide which specific measure is correct for your specific use case. And I'll see you in the next one.